The views and opinions expressed in this podcast by the host and or the guest do not necessarily reflect the views of the host and or Paranormal Buzz Radio and or its sponsors. Use of any material produced by Paranormal Buzz Radio without express written consent is prohibited. Paranormal Buzz Radio will not be held responsible for you holding your knees, crying and rocking in a corner in a puddle of your own urine, or being beheaded by a group of children in a cornfield. In fact, if you come across a group of children in a cornfield, we promise to make fun of you as you run away screaming in terror. Listener discretion is advised. Caution. You are now entering the all-consuming realm of Shay's paranormal chat, where the things that are better left unsaid are actually said. Shut up and sit down. You're listening to Shay's paranormal chat. Paranormal podcasting done Shay's way. Tons of fun. Dude, seriously? A bit sarcastic. Hashtag investigator, not hunter. But always real. Hashtag data, not evidence. Don't get your panties in a twist. Oh my god, really? This is real, raw conversation. Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Good evening, everybody. TGIF. I hope everybody had a great week, and um, I'm happy to be back. Uh, we've had some changes on Paranormal Buzz Radio, and I've been busy, and everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. Um and just a little quick update for those who are not on my personal account or in Exploring the Unknown. Um, my little sidekick, Kiki the Pomeranian, has passed away. This is the first show she's not on. Um, those that have been on more than once know she's either sitting on my lap or on my feet. Or uh, The last show she was on with Darren, I had her little house on top of the desk and she was in the desk so she I mean in the house so she could make eye contact with me while I did the show. <laughs> oh, and uh I have Renee Bernard with me. Hey, how you doing? Hi, how are you? I'm good. Um I'm excited. This has been in the works <laughs> for ever. Hey, I said your last name right. Um actually it's Bedard. Bedard? What the Yeah. At least I didn't say beard. <laughs> true. That is true. <laughs> you will always be Renee Beard to me. Um, no, it's, it's Badan. See? And my best Boston accent. <clears throat> yeah, see? It's the goddamn New Hampshire accent is ruining everything for me. Little by little. You know. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry about that. One of these days I'll get it right. That's okay. Probably not, but I can lie. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> Oh, so um, let's uh, start with just a little, you've been on before and you're going to be on a lot, mm -hmm. um, so you want to introduce yourself again? Sure. Um, my name is Renee Bedard and I am a practicing witch and psychic um, in the Boston area. Um, my, I am a student at um, the Temple of Witchcraft up in Salem, New Hampshire, and I just completed the mystery school there um, in September, Ooh, four years. Wow. So I have my fourth degree and I'm waiting to hear back. Um, and I should be hearing back on that hopefully soon for their ministerial uh, course. So hopefully I will be able to be a high priestess within the temple um, in about a year and a half. But other than that, I've been doing a lot of writing and trying to do some psychic work and, and all that good stuff. So keep it on, keep it on. <clears throat> oh, wow. That's a lot. That's yeah, awesome. That's fine. Thanks. Um, so today we're just like catching up with everybody mm -hmm. and um, reintroducing Renee just in case anybody missed it. If you missed it, you got to go back. Um, she's We've done two, at least two shows together, her full introduction mm -hmm. 
um, I believe that was the end of season four, maybe the beginning of four, I mean five, and then we did how, um, how we haunt ourselves. I believe that was season five too. So, mm -hmm. uh, definitely go back and check that one out because that was a really, really good show. I really liked it. It was a lot of fun. It was. <clears throat> they both were. Yep. That's a cool, it's a cool subject. So speaking of how we haunt ourselves, you have some mm -hmm. news about that? I do. I um, wrote a big article on that, uh, like how the energy works, the personal energy versus we going, uh, that how we can go into a place and feel the other energy, trying to decipher our own personal energy from a quote-unquote haunting or just the energy that's just there from the living humans. And maybe it's not always a spirit or a ghost. Maybe it's, you know, the energy from a living person that's haunting an area. Yep. <laughs> so I, I kind of break down all of that. And I also go into ways on how to clear your energy and how to understand your own energy. So it's, it's going, so I have a, I wrote a big article on that and I'm probably going to break it up because it's too big. I'm going to break it up and put it out as blog posts, but I do have plans um, for future pieces on that specific subject. Cause I think it's important. Yeah, it, it is. Sorry yeah. to, to interrupt. I do that a lot. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> um, well, that's okay. why we broke up our subjects because we mm -hmm. just barely touched on as much as we could on that subject. And then, um, we have a whole list of what we're going to do, and maybe it will coincide with your blogs, maybe not. If we can plan it, yep. maybe that would be better That'd so be you great. can announce it. I know. That would be awesome. Yep. I know. Let's see. We have on our list of topics coming up, clearing energy, us for spirits, um, maybe reincarnation, maybe karma, chakras, protection, and there's a whole lot more. That was just the gist of some of the stuff once you get talking I just take notes and I'm like oh I gotta go back and talk about this <laughs> that's I awesome gotta, that'll be yeah. fun yeah so yeah um so yeah you're gonna be on as much as possible that'll be great yeah uh Kelly my normal co-host um is really busy um she's the first co-host I should say mm -hmm. um for those that don't know, uh, Kelly is getting married. That's exciting. It is. So she's very busy with that. And uh, Traveler's Moon has picked up. And they are so, her and Chris are so, so, so busy. Um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. It really is. She, anybody, Renee, you too, should check them out on Facebook. or Facebook would be the go-to. But they're also on Instagram. And I don't know if Chris does Twitter. I'm not sure. I don't think so. But it's a traveler's moon, so they get some really good stuff. So let's see what else. Oh, Allison will be joining me a lot. Um, maybe we can get me, you, and Allison on a show together. Oh, that'll be cool. Yeah. So um, Renee is. She said maybe, and then she said, well, I have to stop saying no to people. I don't even know if you remember this conversation, so my my <laughs> announcement here might be a surprise to you. But uh, okay. Renee's going to be <laughs> – <Renee I'm ready. laughs> oh, I can't even – Renee is going to be – I'm leaving that in, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Renee is going to be a regular co-host with me um, as mm. much as possible. You know, I swap off, but um, – she said she can't. She has to stop saying no to certain things. So I said, okay, I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> yeah. And it's coming back to haunt me. Yes. So there we go. <laughs> you're like, no, just, do you remember? That you're like, but what do I have to do as a co-host? I'm like, exactly what you do now. Oh, okay, that's not that bad. No, yeah, that'll be fun actually. It will. So yeah. I, I do. I look forward to that. Yeah, I do too. Um, and. If you have any guests you want to bring on, just let me know and we can do that too. Awesome. So oh. for those yes, that missed, <laughs> yeah, for those who missed the first episode, uh, 
Renee and I met at um, somewhere in Maine at a mm-hmm. at a thing. It was a, a conference. It was a fourteen Wait. fest. What was it? The fourteen fest for the, uh, yes. with the paranormal five. The fest. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I could remember the people. I just couldn't remember the name. And um, mm-hmm. I was going to a little table here and there, and you know, I have my own table, so I have to. But something drew me to her. Like, so I went over and we started talking and we hit it off and found out she's from um, where my family is from and knows knows my Boston area, but knows my family. It's just crazy. Mm -hmm. It's a small world. It It really really was. Yeah. I was like, wow. So, and here we are, what, a year and a half later or something? Maybe yeah. longer? Probably, actually, it's probably longer now. It's more like two and a half, maybe? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's yeah. crazy. Because the yeah. last year has been a blur. Mm-hmm. Between it felt like a decade, really. It did. And then we yeah. had to keep canceling, and I was like, oh. And I was, I moved this summer, and because mm-hmm. Kate graduated college, and she was moving and I was moving, so we both moved to Oof. separate places on the same day because I didn't want to stay mm-hmm. there without wow. her. Right. So, yeah. It's a lot. It is. And then everything else. But do you have anything coming up, like any events or um, festivals that you'll be at? Um, actually, I'm sort of starting to plan that stuff. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know... In July, um, I'm going to be doing readings for the shop that I work at, Zuzu's Healing Arts in Peabody, Mass. Uh, she does a, a giant expo in the summertime, and she has all kinds of vendors and readers and energy workers. And so I'm going to be doing readings that day, but I'm also going to be giving a lecture. So I'm really excited about that. I don't know what you're talking about yet, but I am booked to do a lecture. So so that'll that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, last year, I did a lecture on being an empath and how to deal with that kind of energy. So that was interesting, and that was a lot of fun, too. And um, there is also talk. I don't have a date or anything on that on this yet, but I was invited back to um, talk to the library for um, School for the Blind, the Perkins School for the Blind in Arlington, Mass. So that's... That's um, an hour lecture that I'll be able to do that in, no- when is that? That's October. Just curious, uh, what is that lecture mm-hmm. on? Do you know yet? Have you planned? Um, just basic. I, I'm just curious. Yeah. The, I, I think for the Perkins School, I think what I want to do is talk about witchcraft and okay. what it's like to be a witch nowadays and how, you know, yeah. we look like everybody else and all that other stuff. So. Yeah, so you'll have to definitely let us know all your events, and I mm-hmm. can share them out to all my stuff. That'd be great. Thank you. Or any event you think will be fun for our um, New England peeps. All right, so switching gears a little bit here, um, let's take one of these subjects, um, an oh. easy one, and we can go into it in more detail down the road, but let's talk about protection, how... Um, how we should protect ourselves mainly, but there's also ways to protect your surroundings, your household. Mm-hmm. But we can start with um, protecting ourselves. How do, you can go at it. Um, you, how do psychics and empaths, how should they protect themselves, especially ones that are starting out? Okay, that I think is so important. And there are so many different ways to protect ourselves. But I think starting off in in basic, (laughs) easier ways from a witch's perspective, because I'm going to have different prayers that I say compared to it, like what I learned in Catholic school growing up. So not that they don't work. I'm not saying that. It's just what I feel more comfortable with now. Um, And uh, and not to interrupt, but I totally Mm -hmm. agree with that because um, we always have this saying, it has to work for you. You have to believe. I want to start there because you brought up Mm -hmm. the Catholic. If it doesn't work for you, it doesn't mean it doesn't work. But if you don't believe that full heartedly, 
about the protection you're using, it's not going to work. Right, right. And, you know, sometimes people will say words because it works better for them. Some people will envision themselves. And, um, oh, I don't know if you remember, but back in the 80s and in the 70s, all the, all the, um, the pioneer books, you know, from the occult witchcraft area, yeah. you know, um, they would talk about like more mainstream because there's a difference. So the more mainstream people would talk about putting yourself in the white light or putting yourself in, the, in a little bubble. And, I think they got that know, from Poltergeist, the white light. Probably, you know, but, but actually stuff like that comes back. Like there are roots to these things to, there is no easy question. First of all, by the way, I'm just going to leave that. There's no easy answer to the questions. No. Um, a lot of the stuff that we practice now have roots in the occult, um, like the Theosophical Society from Madame Blavatsky. Um, a lot of the stuff that we do now, especially a lot of the New Age stuff, has roots in the that kind of realm. And then you can have things that go back to the occultists. You know, um, so working with the white light, working with the putting yourself in a bubble, there, there are threads that link back to that. But it, a lot of the more modernish things that people are familiar with that movies took over um they would put them you know you can put yourself in a bubble and put yourself in those white lights and it worked for me at that point in time and that and it would still work for me now um just like it works with many many people if i'm going to be starting i think that is a great visual you know the more people work with something in particular, like the Catholics with, you know, the Our Fathers or the Hail Marys, because there's a lot of history, there's a lot of power behind that. Power, if, again, if you if believe it. Right. So, and, you know, so it works. Yeah. Um, so when you work with the white light or, or the bubble or, or anything like that, I, I do feel it adds... A layer of protection. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree to you. Um, for empaths, I like to say, especially ones that like to work with crystals. Um, I'm a crystal girl, so yeah, I'm gonna have all these different crystals. So um, a black um, obsidian stone, yeah. or I like to use golden sheen because it's golden, so you have the color again. Oh, oh which brings me long way around. I'll get to it. <laughs> no, no, no. That's hey. After all, mine. And the uh, the golden sheen obsidian has the color of the sun because of the gold in it. So it kind of like reflects the golden light. So not only do you have the power of the obsidian to clear your energy or to keep your your boundaries clean and bounce the other stuff off of you, you also have the power of the sun because it's that golden color. You know, so you you're adding in the ability to stand in your own skin yeah. and to let anything icky melt away. You know, like they, they say, you know, the best disinfectant is sunlight. So you have the power of the obsidian, you have the power of the sun together crystallized in a stone. So I, I absolutely, that's the first stone. That is one of the, that's like my, my go to for all brand new people on the path. And for those that are wondering and then or working with new ways, you know, so who the veterans, I guess is a better way to say it. Not yeah. wondering, pardon me. The veterans. So whether you're new or you're a veteran, you can work with that stone for protection, for clearing your energy and keeping you nice and clean. Um and what I was talking about and why I brought up Madame Blavatsky is because she she was the one or one of the first people that got to kind of work with the color rays. You know, each color has a vibration and those vibrations um, vibrate with specific energies. So the golden is great for empowering and clearing. 
does it you know does it work differently with people's energy um or just energy in general i think energy in general okay because um like I personally, and when I when I teach people, when I mentor people, I will say, you know, instead of white light, because white light can sometimes be blinding, you know what I mean? If you can't see yeah. protection, I, I like to use either gold or silver, or sometimes turquoise or red, depends on my mood. <laughs> you know what I mean? But all of those colors can be very protective. Silver for the moon, you know, if if. So, it, like, silver sheen obsidian. So you have the black and silver. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you can be as simple or as intricate as you want to be. And that's what I think sometimes we lose sight of, you know. Because, yes. yeah, sure, the white light works. If it works for you, I prefer a couple of other colors instead. <laughs> you know what I mean? But if I'm not sure what I I need, that's my go-to, too, because it's, it's everything. Does that, I, hope that, I hope I answered your question. You, well, you did. Um, <laughs> okay. You did. Like, this, we have to do a whole episode on this. And okay. I wrote down now on my list, I also wrote down crystals. So. Mm. <laughs> um, that would be fun. Yes. Because, like, I'm quiet, but that's just because I'm thinking and picturing as you're talking. Yeah. Okay. And I laughed when you mentioned bubbles because mm -hmm. when people ask me, um, psychics, and I don't know why they ask me, but I do have people that ask me, like, or, like, how I don't protect myself. Enough. That's the one I go to because it's the one I can explain the best. But I also yeah. add that they need to somebody more experienced with it than me. Mm -hmm. But I do do, I do say, picture the bubble at least yep. until oh, yeah. they can talk to somebody else. Yeah. And, it, and like I said, it works. Yeah. The bubble is a boundary. We're creating a boundary yeah. between our energy and something or other people's stuff to come in. So, you know? Yeah. Like <laughs> this just came to my head. Sorry. Not sorry. Um, <laughs> like mainstream, right? You mentioned mainstream. So, mm -hmm. With the bubble, picture Twilight. <laughs> oh, that, that last yeah. one where she pro projects her energy out to protect herself. <laughs> like I, I didn't see the movie. Oh, that's okay. But yeah. it just that came to my head. Uh, yeah. I prefer my vampires movies as the Lost Boys. <laughs> oh yes, yes. <laughs> Sorry, not nope. not knocking Twilight. I'm sure. Yeah. Hey, I've said butters. worse. <laughs> Don't worry. We're not going to insult anybody because you haven't, you know, seen Twilight. But that's all that. Yeah. I just watched them all again because I wasn't sleeping. So that's probably yeah. why it came in my head. <laughs> that's funny. But, yeah, just envision yourself and push out your energy yeah. to try to um, protect yourself better than yeah. going in not – Bear, like it, you don't want yep. to do that. Naked. Naked. No. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's like when I, one of the other things that I like to teach and talk about for protection, I'll ask sometimes, um, I'll, in order to get the, the color that I want to see come around me, I'll breathe it in. So I'll ask, my divine, you know, the goddess, God, great spirit to bring down some, it depends on my mood. Sometimes it's like a, a tractor beam, you know, like Star Trek. Um, sometimes it'll <laughs> look like a, like a spotlight, you know, a little softer, but I'll ask, I'll connect with the higher powers and ask them to bring down that light in, into my crown. And then I breathe it into my body and then from my hot chakra, I push that light out and I about foot and a half to two feet around my entire body. So it's above, below and all around. And I ask that color to be my shield. Nice. I get it. Uh, and, instead of the bubble, because yes. I like to, I'm, I'm what, I don't know. I, it's I, almost the same thing. But, it is, but I'm but a little it's a next, dramatic. No, it's a next step. <laughs> it's a next step higher, and that's what I try to tell people. You know, first I tell them I should not be given advice. 
and take my advice when it comes to this as well, you will because I'm you know but I, I follow the basics yeah. you know you can't you can't come home with me yep. politely um, yep you know so I do and I do have Kelly sent me um, a stone that sometimes depending on where I'm going I bring I should bring it all the time but I forget so do you remember what stone it is I have a black one and a blue one a turquoise color one mm -hmm. I think I so think turquoise can be is, can be protective as well yeah the, I know mm -hmm. I definitely have a black one but the other one's like kind of like a turquoise color mm -hmm. and Kelly mm -hmm. will be mad at me because I can't remember what they're called but um, <laughs> there's so many Tourmaline is tourmaline. Is that one? I think I have one of yeah. those. That's protective too. Yep. Yeah. So I'm actually wearing a bracelet with tourmaline right now. Yeah, you you oh. are so knowledgeable. You and Kelly oh. would be like two peas in a pod. Like uh, uh, thank you. I'd like, like to meet her, so that'd be great. Yeah. It would be, you know, one side covering the other and it would be great. But, um, mm -hmm. she, she's a medium too, yeah? Yeah, she's a psychic medium. Yeah. Um, yeah. She's also one that um, doesn't necessarily care about labels, but yes, yeah, psychic medium, mm. empath. Um, so a lot of my co-hosts are, um, which is kind of funny. It just happened that way because yeah. I'm just an investigator, although... Some people argue with me on that because I yeah. have insight sometimes. Personally, I think we're all psychic. She says it that too. It just comes out in different ways. Yeah. So um, we all perceive energy in different ways because I, I think personally, first and foremost, we're beings of spirit. We need the physical body on, on, this, on this plane. So, you know how we can perceive the different energies, just like how we can visualize different things and different things resonate with us. Right. Some, you know, I, I can hear and sense and feel. And like when I was younger, I was able to see first and foremost, but I eventually developed the hearing with spirits over time. So I think as much time as, an effort and energy you put into something, you know, you can get these secondary or latent um, abilities. Yeah. I guess that's a good way to say it to pop in, but we all have that gut instinct. Right. Uh, that's, I just have a very strong one. Hmm. So do you think it's more of a growing? It's not like all of a sudden you have a new ability. You just um, feed or grow off the other one and get where you we're always supposed to be. I think so. And it, it's kind of like a tree. You know, we're born in this particular incarnation right. with yeah. a certain oh, things that we're aware of. And as time goes on, you know, we can grow our different talents, our interests change, our perspectives change. So we can open up other doors. And, uh, you know, I've been, I've been a professional psychic for a long time now. Um, and when I, because I was, I, I grew up that way. I, I thought everybody couldn't see right? <laughs> at the time. I'm like, oh, no, 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 people don't always see, you know, their dead grandparents. Yep. But <clears throat> learned that really fast. <laughs> However, <laughs> uh, especially in Catholic school, yeah, you learn your audience real quick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, the more I try to understand the abilities and how they worked, kind of like how some people like to take apart radios to see how they work. Right. I look, I try to understand where I felt the different messages. And the more I did that, other things started to open as the abilities I knew about got stronger. So then I could just change and, and kind of maneuver. Right. I get that. Know, yeah, yeah. I'm visualizing as you talk. I can't wait to hear one of your actual lecture lectures because I really That's visualize fun. what you're saying. Thanks. No, oh, you're so welcome. Um, 
I can't wait. It's going to be a good season. Uh, rough start, but it is going to be a good season. And um, mm-hmm. we're going to start wrapping this up. If you want to um, add any more events or anything you have coming up and where people can find you on social media. Okay. Um, the easiest way to find me on social media is through probably Instagram. Instagram is The Whispering Crow. My website is thewhisperingcrow.com. And I am going to be doing a public ritual um, at the shop that I work at, uh, Zuzu's Healing Arts and Peabody, at the end of February, where we will be doing a ritual to kind of plant the seeds to kind of get us moving because it's been a long I know we're at the end of January, beginning of February, and to get us moving. So to in, inspire ourselves, and we're going to be calling upon the goddess Bridget in ritual, and we're going to do a, a journey meditation to her so we can light our own fires inside us. So that's going to be the, the end of February in person. So I'm very excited about that. And I'm available for readings and yeah. That sounds amazing. It really does, actually. I'm very excited about it. Yeah. Back, getting back to normal again, whatever normal means, but getting back into being in person would be great. Awesome. I, yeah. I can't you. wait. Um, I'll share out your information, and um, I cannot wait for the upcoming episodes. Oh, me too. It's going to be a lot of fun. It is. I appreciate it so much. Thank you for being on with me. Thank you for putting up with all the changes and (laughs) scheduling issues I've had. Got to go with the flow. That's right. We do. So, Mm -hmm. um, all right, everybody, make sure you punch that like button. Spreaker is getting really fussy about it. So hit that like button so my shows go back up the top. I would really appreciate that. And um, don't forget to like and share and watch on Paranormal Buzz Radio. I'm going to share out Renee's information so you guys can check her out. And um, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you.